Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to those who've come on time for church today. <laughs> Yay. Oh, this is Stan. Hello, Gabriel, over there all by himself. <laughs> We actually, we know of so many Zionites that have gone on holiday this weekend. So it is going to be a smaller group today, but it doesn't make any difference to what's going to happen, what God can do. So let's just, let's just stand. You guys ready to worship? Yeah? You ready to worship? Ah, oh, let's just lift our hands in this place. Let's prepare our hearts, prepare our spirits. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, we honour You right now in this place. Father, I thank You, Lord, for what happened in this house last weekend. God, thank You, Lord, for Converge 2020. Lord, that You were doing a new thing, God. And it was a season, it was a moment of, of fresh vision, of seeing anew. And so I thank You, God, that You don't leave the place and then come back again on a, on a Sunday. Lord, this is this place, this is where You reside. This is where You dwell. So we've come into Your house. We've come into the house of the Lord this morning. So we come right now to worship You to honour You, to give You all the glory. In Jesus' Name, have Your way. Have Your way. Have Your way. Have Your way in the mighty Name of Jesus. Have Your way. We honour You in the house. We honour You in this place. In the Name of Jesus. Jesus. You give life. You will love.
Child. 
to embrace you more fully Open our hearts to believe all that you say All that you do Open our hearts to fully believe Open our eyes to embrace you you are During the worship, I, I had the, the vision of the, that someone in this room was in that transition and it was, um, you were transitioning like the monarch butterfly does, but it, when it's a little grub on the milkweed plant and it's eating, it's like the, the milkweed plant is like a poisonous plant. And but it's food for the, for the little grub. And, but then the grub, the, the, it, it weaves, it's in this cocoon and the transition is happening in the cocoon. And I just kept getting this picture that there's someone in this place that's like you're in the cocoon and you cannot see what you're about to become. And, and in that place in, in the cocoon, there's a total transformation happening and it's like you're losing the essence of who you were. And the essence of who you were was a, a grub on a milkweed plant. 
And it's this very confusing time because something's happening, there's a transition happening. And I want to tell you that the, it's about to open. And the monarch butterfly, it's one of the most amazing butterflies of all, can fly so much further. It's uh, just an incredible butterfly and it's so beautiful. And so it's going, so you might be in that place. I see, I see you in that place where it's very confusing, but look out. You're about to come out into this most amazing place. And your vision will be totally different. Instead of just eating from the milkweed plant, you'll be flying and soaring high above. You can fly across nations. So that's for someone in the house this morning. And if it's you, just receive that and thank the Lord because he's about to break forth in you. Amen. Amen. Well, we have, uh, before the children go out we, to children's church, we have one of the young people graduating. So, Anna, Anna, where are you? Do you want to come out here? Um, this year we have Greg graduating in King's Kids. So, would you like to come out, Greg? Here's a certificate to show that you're graduated and a present. Graduating King's Kids, our children's ministry. Just to make really good. Yeah. Yeah, let's just pray for Greg. Stretch out your hands to him. Lord, we just thank you for Gregory. Lord, as he... Um, leaves the children's church. I thank you, Lord, that there is, you have so much for him, so much ahead, Lord. And I see that, that he has leadership giftings on him. And I just thank you, Lord, that he will see that and he'll begin to step into those things as he, in these next few years, as he's growing up, that he would see. And I pray, Lord, that you would give him a clear vision of his future, that you would give him a clear picture and that he would fully embrace that, fully embrace all that you have called him to be. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I saw photos of you this week and you look really dapper in your school graduation. <laughs> She's flowing in the prophetic this morning. I love it. Um, the song that the Lord downloaded to Carolyn, hear the, the lion's roar, that actually is a sound of war. And we, did, we haven't picked it up. We've just sung it, but we haven't roared the sound. We haven't picked up the sound. And the Lord says we have to pick it up because we can sit back. We had an amazing weekend. It was powerful, but we can sit back. And the Lord says, it's not time to sit back. It's time to roar the sound of the line of the tribe of Judah and to walk in kingdom authority. Amen. So we can't sit back. I almost sat back on Monday, my body so tired from the dancing the night before. And the Holy Spirit woke me up so strong. Get out of bed. You get up to Launceston to prayer. What do you think you're doing going to sleep? And spoke to my sister Nisi. She had it the night before. So we arrived. So that's what we could do. We could sit back and the Lord says, we have to roar. Espen's had it and wanted to roar. The Lord said, you should have roared. You would have released the sound. Her son is here from Melbourne. Just got to speak to him, Aristotle. I said, what a great name, Aristotle. And I was sitting in worship and I saw the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the whole of chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. It's your scripture today. Study the scripture. It finishes towards the end that Jesus, God gave Jesus as the wisdom of God for us. Jesus is the wisdom of God. He's the mind of God. He's the heart. He's the, uh, the word of God. And the Lord's about to do, uh, you're about to have a collision course with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be so shaken that your brain will be shifted. You wonder what is happening to you. The mind of Christ is about to be downloaded. You Proverbs should be your book to read. <laughs> but it's the wisdom and the mind of God. It's not man's wisdom or philosophies. The Lord would say uh, to seek after His wisdom. You are a wise man 
And yes, you've studied philosophers and you've learnt a lot, but the Lord says you're about to encounter the mind of Christ the wisdom of God. Amen. I have seen there's been seasons where your beautiful heart has been at war with your mind. And sometimes that can bring uh, depression or bring confusion. That season, those seasons are about to end, says the Lord. Amen. Welcome, my friends. There's lots of families not here today. They're away for certain reasons, but there's a family from Wynyard that I treasure that are here with the two sons, Sam and Jake. Grab them. Before they go out the door, don't let them go without giving them a holy hug. Amen. So just catch on. Don't go to sleep, the Lord says. Pick up the sword of the Spirit is the uh, uh, offensive weapon of the armour of God. It's time to take up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and we have to fight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Avalon. Amen. Children's Church are going out this morning. So if you were wondering what the ABC television were doing in here this morning, it's um, because they're filming a story on Esperance for Mama's calf. So it's funny. They should have come last week. They were supposed to come last week. And um, we have a lot of people away today. So, but you're here and um, welcome also anyone else visiting. May God touch you in, a, in an incredible, incredible way this morning. Amen. Yeah, so welcome to all the guests here this morning. Amen. Well, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, or or Ephesians 4. I'm going to read something out of Ephesians 4, first of all. Um, When I talk about living in the light and imitating the Father... You know, he has called each one of us to live in the light. And I think that picture of that monarch butterfly actually is a beautiful picture of of coming out of this place where it's been in this really dark place and coming out into that place of, of light. And God's calling us to live in the fullness of what what he, he has for us and the fullness of salvation. And and then he's given us instructions for Victorious living, victorious living. And we can see the instructions as rules or regulations, or we can see them as keys. And um, before I get into uh, this verse in chapter 5, I'm just going to read some, um, some keys that he has for us in Ephesians chapter 4. And one of them is, don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. Don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. It's, uh, you know, at that point, you know, we've been given emotions and emotions are, are a gift that God has given us. But when he gives us these instructions, he says, don't let that happen because, you know, I want you to be protected from that or the, the outcome of that. If it causes you to, to go into sin, it says, be angry and sin not. So, in that place of, of, you know, something might make you angry, but it's what you do with your emotions that will um, have, have an effect on the outcome for your life. And the other one is don't let anger control you for, or be a fuel for revenge, not even for a day. So that anger starts to control you. And then it can be fuel for revenge, like something might happen to you And life is not always fair. Who knows that? God is good, but life is not always fair. And things might happen. But don't let that anger cause it there to be fuel for revenge. I'm going to get back at them. I'm going to give them what what they owe. It's like in Christ, we're we're to be a, a new creation. We're to be different. We're to be different. He wants us to live above it. He says, don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to manipulate you. See, when you get caught up in this, the enemy is now, you're in a position for him to manipulate you. And then it says, if anyone has stolen from someone else, never do it again. Never let ugly or hateful words, this is uh, verse 29 in the Passion Translation, come from your mouth. Instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. 
And so now I want to read these in chapter 5, in the first two verses. It's, um, these are amazing verses. It says, be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ, for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet, healing fragrance. And the Greek word here, mimets, frequently depicts an actor playing a role. And God wants us to mimic him. You know, with a, with a child, they will mimic the parents. They'll see what are the parents doing, and they will start to mimic them. And we've actually, he's, we've actually been given permission. He wants us to mimic him. He wants us what, what he does. He wants us to be like that. Each one of us, that what we see him doing, he wants us to imitate that. We're called to be imitators of God. We're called to be like the Lord and do the works that he did. I mean, that sounds incredible. We're called to imitate God, the God of the universe. Made the heavens and the earth, and we're called to imitate him. We're called to be like him. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think we've got to stop and think about this. Because you might get up in the morning and just get on with life and all that, but hang on a minute. <laughs> you're a son or daughter of the Most High God. If you've given your life to Christ, you're a son or daughter of the Most High God. And then we are called to be like Him. Wow. We're called to be like Him. And so this is our highest quest to think his thoughts, to speak his words, and to go through life seeing through his eyes and hearing with his ears and getting his heart for others. So the creator of the universe, the same power, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is in us, is in us. He is all-powerful, he is almighty, and he has given us power. And he has given us power, it says, over all the power of the enemy. And he wants us to step into that place and declare, no, this is how it shall be. Make the declarations and see, what is it? These are, see, these are our rights as children of God. He wants us to be like him. And so we can choose, you get up in the morning, life might have been really hard. Like the other day I was exhausted. Who was exhausted after the last weekend? It was just pour out and pour out. Yeah, who's still exhausted? Yeah. Yeah, I know some people just poured out and poured out and poured out. And, um, and I, was, I was so tired. And then I got up and said, right, today I choose joy. Why? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I choose joy. I could have chosen, oh, I feel really, oh, I just feel exhausted. And, um, you know, we finished that and then I choose joy. You know, we choose, we step in. What, is, what does Christ have? We imitate him. Jesus was always full of joy. No matter what was happening around him, he was full of joy. He he. He was full of joy. That was who he is. The fruits of the Spirit were always coming from him. Joy, love, peace, long-suffering. We choose and we step in. So when he gives us instructions, that's why, you know, the, as you read the Word, it says you wash yourself with the water of the Word because it will reveal things. The entrance of his Word brings light. And... You can sort of slip into an attitude or whatever and start to get a bit whatever. And when you're reading that, it's like it brings light to cut. You feel, oops, you know, there's a bit of an attitude there that's not right. So we have to imitate him. So he gives us, 
his instructions. He gives us the word of life so that we take a hold of it and we are to live in that place of victory. We are to live above and not beneath. We are to live as overcomers, for we are. Turn to your neighbour and say, you are an overcomer. Someone didn't believe that. (laughs) You are an overcomer. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Lord, the Spirit, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Do you realize what that says? We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. God wants to take you from that place of where it's glorious, but it's, there's more. And it's more glorious from glory to glory. So that you just get so excited. You just want to spin around. Spin around. You know, I think sometimes we let our emotions take us in the wrong direction and we follow the path of our emotions. And right now, I believe the Lord's saying, stop going down the path of your emotions. Start reflecting him. Start reflecting his glory. Take a hold of what he has given you. If God says it, it's mine. If he says this is for for you, take it. It's mine. I love Kathy Walters used to say that. She said, see this, devil, see this, mine, 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 mine. Everything that's in it is for us to take a hold of. But we have to start coming into agreement with it. Because if we're agreeing with the wrong thing, there's strength in that. You see, what you come into alignment with in your agreement gives strength to the wrong thing, if it's the wrong thing. But when you start to come into agreement with the word of the Lord, Lord, I read this and I see I'm coming into agreement with it. That's what the Lord is waiting for. He's waiting for his children to come into agreement with what he says. So that we see what he sees. That we hear what he hears. That, that our attitude is the attitude that he has. So that when, you know, when you're pricked or something tries to come against you, what, what comes out? Is it our earthly attitude, our reactionary one? Or is it, no, I choose. We can choose. You know that. We can choose not to go down the path of darkness. We can choose to reject and say, no, that's not who I am. I think some of you have to write out uh, what a lot of things about what the Bible says you are. And you write those things out and decree them, declare them. The Lord says, I am this. The Lord says, I am royalty. You know, that'll bring a shift. But if you get up and think you're a victim, one of the biggest things the enemy wants to put on people is to make them feel like they are victims. But you are not a victim. You can rise up. You know the scripture I've often given you? I broke the power that held you down and let you walk with your head held high. That's, that's not a victim. That's someone who's victorious. They have risen above. I broke the power that held you down and let you walk with your head held high. God gave me that scripture when, I, when my head was held down, when I couldn't see the answers and I couldn't see the way through and I felt like I was wrapped in chains. I really did. I felt like I was literally wrapped in chains. And I read that and I'll never forget just meditating on that. It said, I broke the power that held you down. I thought I was captive to these chains around me. I thought I was captive to the things that were happening in my life. I, was, I thought I was captive to, you know, if you've read my book, my, the healing song. I thought I was captive to the things that had happened after I had an accident. I thought, because there was no, it seemed to be no answers, but I read there, I broke the power that held you down. And I let you walk with your head held high. I used to walk like this, you know, when I was going through the really hard time. My head was down. It was like, "Hmm, I can't see a way out. (laughs) But when he said, I broke the power, someone needs to hear that this morning. I broke 
the power that held you down, which means it's not holding you back anymore. I've let you walk with your head held high. I let you walk with your head held high. We are made in his image and we are to reflect his image, which is an overcomer, which is victorious. Cease from any mumbling. Don't let mumbling get in because mumbling and grumbling, it's like it will swallow you up. You know, if you complain, you know, get into complaints, it will swallow you up. Step out of the complaints. We're to reflect him. So we hand it to him and praise him and he will, he will be our strength. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so 1 John 2, 6 says, the one who says he abides in him ought himself walk in the same manner as he walked. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, be imitators of me just as I also am an imitator of Christ. So Paul was imitating Christ and he's telling them to, so he became an example. God wants you to be an example for others. Philippians 3 verse 12 to 16 in the Passion Translation, I love this one. Um, This is Paul speaking and he says, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and he wants me to discover. I don't rely on my own strength, there's a key in there, to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus, I forget all the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. That, that's a powerful scripture. You need to underline that. Philippians is a real, uh, an, an incredible book for us to avoid going into depression or feeling hopeless because it says... Um, I run with passion into the abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill. He's called each one of you to fulfill something in life because he's written a book and uh, he has your name on the book and he has things that he wants you to do. But when you run into his, it's in his love. When you're in, in him, in his love and wrapped in his love, you begin to see what it is, and you press forward, you press forward to what he has for you. And he wants you to discover it. He wants you to discover it. So that was one of the the keys was um, living in God's love and walk in love. And it's not a sloppy kind of love. It's that agape that, that is that unconditional, it's the highest form of love. So we walk in his unconditional love. And I think when you realize his love for you is unconditional, sometimes we think, I haven't been good today. He doesn't love me as much. Always know that his love for you is unconditional. And if you start going off on the wrong track, he will pursue you. He will pursue you. He will go after you to bring you back on track. That's his love, his unconditional love. And knowing that is, is a key for us as we live in his love. So when we were redeemed, we were bought with a price and we are no longer our own. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. Our great love for others is pleasing to God like a... an oh. I've said that, aroma, a sweet healing fragrance. So his love is like a fragrance, a healing fragrance. And, you know, I think churches are to be, there's, there's a battle often over churches because the devil doesn't like it. But the demonstration of what the gathering of the Christians is, to be the the representatives of heaven and have that unconditional love. And I see that in the future when we have our prophetic worship events, that God is just bringing us into uh, a place where 
where these things are just going to increase. And he spoke to me and, and said that uh, we invite other churches and ministries to partner with us for the, for the next stage because of, of God is going to be sending people in. But he wants to send them into a safe place, a safe place where, the, where heaven's love, God's love is just flowing and is a healing fragrance, a healing anointing in the place so that when anyone comes in, they might come in weary, they might come in burnt out, but they won't, they won't leave the same. And so that's why God is gathering a people together. He's gathering a people together that will learn his ways that will be able to host safely, something like that. He wants to entrust us with, you know, his things of his heart. And he wants to send in the hurting and the wounded and the broken. And he wants to send in um, our beautiful Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders from all, all around Australia. And, and to come here and have, have this weekend and praise the Lord for Africa coming. And uh, we've got Filipinos here and New Zealanders and, and the nations he wants to bring in the nations, but bring them into a safe place. You see, we weren't given 50 acres for nothing. We weren't given 50 acres just to sit on it. It's, he wants to do something that is so incredible in this place. But he's raising up. He wants to raise you up to the fullness of who he's called you to be, that you're not in chains, that you're not staying in that, in that place of, of brokenness, but you're coming into a place of healing. You know, I, I always, I, I thought, I'd got to that place many years ago where I thought I could never come through. I didn't think I could come through. In fact, when my sister was, um, God put it on her heart to, to help and walk through, walk me through. And someone said to her, I don't know why, I don't know why you're spending this time to help her, she'll never come through. That's what they said. She, she'll never be right. She'll never be right. Uh, that, that's the thought of, that's the enemy's thought. That to say, you'll never be right. You'll never come through. No, I, I couldn't see how I could. I was just entrapped in this thing after having an accident with electricity. And there was no cure in the natural. There was no cure. The doctors couldn't find a cure. So it did seem like it was impossible. But instead... You know, I think how simple it was. The, the instructions that I was given were so simple. I'd been trying to find the answer in such complex ways. And he said, give me thanks. Give me thanks. It's like, give you thanks? I don't feel like it. And I gritted my teeth and I said, I can't give thanks. But it kept coming, give me thanks, give me thanks. Give me thanks. <laughs> and when it's a life or death situation and you have no, you either just keep going that way and you know you'll never come, you'll never, that you won't live. But when I knew that this was, it, to me it had got to the point of life or death. If I, were, you know, if I didn't come through, that was it. And so that's when I started to give thanks but it did not come. I can honestly tell you it was not a decision of my heart. It was a decision from my head. It was an act of my will. Okay, I will. But I, for the first few days when I went on these praise walks that he instructed me to go on, when I began going on the praise walks, I would, and I was to hand over everything and thank him. And for the first at least four or five days, it was through gritted teeth. My teeth were gritted together. I did not feel like giving thanks. I don't feel like thanking you, Lord. My life has been wasted. But I, so I did it as an act of my will through gritted teeth. And eventually I could actually say it without holding my teeth tightly together. And then finally I could say it quite easily. And then I started to see the creation around me, which I hadn't honestly properly noticed before. And I started to notice that, hey, the world looks beautiful. Wow. Look at the butterflies. Look at the cows. I was going for a walk around the orchards where there were cows and there were 
apple trees and pear trees. And I started thanking the Lord for everything beautiful along the way. And it was changing my world. My world was changing. But it started with this simple thing where he said, give, give me thanks. Give me thanks. You see, when you give thanks, you cannot live in the place of self-pity. You can't stay there. Honestly, that's what I discovered. Because I felt sorry for myself. I felt life was unfair and I was sorry for myself. But taking that step of giving thanks, not just once a day, hundreds, literally hundreds of times a day, I would hand over these things, whatever was going on, or even thoughts or fears, hand them over and pray that he would be glorified in them and give him thanks. And so as I was giving thanks, the more I was giving thanks, the self-pity, it started to leave me. You see, self-pity will, call, will, will um, allow you to stay in the place of a victim. And when you're in the place of a victim, you can't come through it because you're a victim and life's not fair. Hello? Life's not fair. I'm a victim. It's not fair. I'm stuck here and no one can help me. Well, God was virtually stripping away all the people that I was expecting would help me. Until it was more like just him and I. And my sister just ringing to encourage me, you're coming through. And so as all of the the hope and expectations from everywhere else for an answer were, were not forthcoming, the simple words of give, give me thanks give me thanks, were the absolute key. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. And so the more I began to thank, you know, I'll tell you what begins to happen. You begin to praise him. It's like something begins to open up and I began to praise him. Oh, wow, Lord, look at this creation. Wow, look at the sun. Look at the sun shining. I hadn't noticed the sun shining. I hadn't noticed the petals on the flowers before. For I was too busy feeling sorry for myself. I was too busy living the place of a victim. But now I could start to see the beauty around me. And in seeing the beauty around me, I thought of the creator. And how amazing he is. God, just so amazing. You made these. And so the shift was happening. I was coming out of the place of being a victim. I was coming out of the place of impossible and no cure. Remember that? That's what they said. There's no cure, sorry. You have to live with it for the rest of your life. Electrical storms in my brain. And as I'm giving thanks and handing over every storm that would come and thanking, I found myself praising the Lord. And I found myself just wanting to, wanting to praise him. Such a shift happening. So from the place of doing it with gritted teeth to giving thanks to wanting to praise him. And then that brought me to the place of worship. Because the more you give thanks and you praise, I'll tell you what happens. It's like God inhabits the praises of his people. And so because God was there, I wanted to worship him. And it's like he led me on this whole journey of just worshipping him. And in that place, he would visit with me and, and share his heart with me on several occasions, which changed my life, it changed my world. He began pouring his love into me. I had a, probably a religious mindset about his love. And I thought it was that I, I had to, you know, measure up before he would love me. But as he was pouring his love into me, it actually brought real healing into me. You see, in that place, we talk about being a mirror and a reflection of him. It's in that place of love and knowing, stepping into that place, Lord, you love me. You love me. And then those fears and the torment and the things that, that try to define you begin to fall away. And I felt I was under this 
um, absolute transformation, and I was. I was. The Lord was over a period of nine months. It took me nine months to come, come through that. But over that period of nine months of giving thanks, and then praising Him, and then just beholding Him, I would read the Bible and. In fact, I had to get rid of every other book at that time and not, read the, not watch the television and, and just read the word because I was so, um, very, so sensitive inside for I needed life, words of life. I couldn't, um, you know, when you're in that place of almost like life and death, you can't take words of death into your spirit. You can't afford it. And so I had to take words of life into my spirit. The Lord just said, put everything else aside and just read the pure word of God. And so as I just began reading his word, it, it was like, it was life. It was restoring me. It was lifting me. It was bringing me uh, to another place in him. So that his word began, it became so precious to me as I was reading it. I think I shared not that long ago that when Carolyn was little, she wanted to take my Bible to bed with her. Because you must have seen how precious it was to me and I was just reading it all the time. This is a new one I bought this week. It's probably not going to look new for very long. It's slightly different to in the Passion Translation. So as I'm writing the songs from the Passion Translation, there's some changes happening. So, But anyway, um, so she, would, she took the Bible and walked down the passage holding it real tight as if it was the most precious thing. And I thought, you know, the children see... They see what happens, and, and it, was, it was special to her because it was special to me. But it was my lifeline. My lifeline was the Word of God. Your lifeline is the Word of God. His Word is truth. His Word, the entrance of His Word brings light, and it brings understanding, and it brings healing. For His Word, the Bible says the Word of God is alive, it's active, And it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And so it will cut through. So the more I began just reading the word and giving thanks and giving praise and and worshipping him, the things that are ensnaring you cannot stay. They cannot stay. There's no chain too strong that cannot withstand the power of praise and worship. No chain. That's why God wants to, us to host these events at the end of the year because it's, it's framed in praise and worship. And in that place of praise and worship and be, being just clamorously foolish before the Lord, we need to see a bit more of that in this house. I mean, yes, we should finish with something like that, yeah. And just get out of your seats and... Break forth. We are trying to be um, proper because the ABC, we're here this morning, trying to be a bit more subdued. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, break forth. Break forth into joy. Break forth into, into who he is. David was, he just was going after God and he wanted, he wanted, to be a reflection of, of God. And he, as a worshipper, you begin to reflect his glory. You begin, you cannot stay in the place of self-pity. If you step out and dance, if you step out and say, I am going to, I choose to, I, I choose to praise, I choose to lift my voice, I choose to lift my song, I choose to have joy today, like I did the other day when I was tired and I thought I would just hang around with myself and just be exhausted. But I thought that's probably not going to be, you know... That's not going to work. So I I said, I actively got up and I said, today I choose joy. I choose to have joy. I felt stronger immediately making making those declarations. Ephesians, oh, I just want to read those two verses again that I went back to because it says, be imitators of God in everything you do. For then you'll represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. I think we need to underline it and learn it off by heart. For he 
surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. I think we need to, I, I should put that one to a melody. We need to put to learn those scriptures because it, it, it says, be imitators of God in everything you do, not in some things. In everything you do, so that you're looking for, how would he be in this? How, how would God be in this situation? How would, he, how would he be? I want to be like that. See, those keys that he gives us will, will lift us up above. In uh, verse 8 of chapter 5, it says, Once your life was filled with sins, darkness, but now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you because of your union with him. Your mission is to live as children flooded with his revelation light. And the supernatural fruits of his life will be seen in you. Goodness, righteousness and truth. And then you will learn to choose, there it is, what is beautiful to our Lord. And don't even associate with the servants of darkness because they have no fruit in them. Instead, reveal truth to them because they have no fruit in them. The very things they do in secret are too vile and filthy to even mention. Whatever the revelation light exposes, it will also correct. And everything that reveals truth is light to the soul. Everything that reveals truth is light to the soul. And then living in God's wisdom in verse 15 and 16 says, so be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom. For we are living in evil times. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purpose. And don't live foolishly, for then you will have discernment to fully understand God's will. And don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled continually with the Holy Spirit, and your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord. Keep speaking to each other with words of Scripture, singing with psalms and with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. And always give thanks to Father God for every person he brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And one of the things I just want to finish with is that he has given us the keys of the kingdom. Each one of us have been given the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So one of the things that when we had Liberty Savard here from America once a few years ago, she taught us the, uh, a few days of teaching on the keys of the kingdom. But in a nutshell, it's like I bind my mind to the mind of Christ. So let's just say that. Let's stand and we want to say this. I bind my mind to the mind of Christ. I bind my will to the will of the Father. I bind my emotions to the healing balance of the Holy Spirit. I loose off me wrong thinking, wrong mindsets, wrong patterns of thinking. And I embrace your thinking, Lord. I embrace your thoughts. I embrace your will. And I embrace it your way. Yeah, Lord, thank you that you have, you have called us to take that authority. And to loose things that should not be there and to recognize when things are trying to attach themselves to us that don't belong there. Lord, that we would live in the light of your glory. We would live in the light of your word. And that we would step out. That we would choose to live your way. We would choose to live in, in joy. We would choose to live with your peace. Lord, that we would recognize when the enemy's trying to bring a snare or to try and pull us under, that we would recognize it and take a stand and say no. Lord, you are raising up warriors, not warriors. You're taking warriors and making them warriors. 
warriors. Lord, the, the lion roar again and on this hill. And Lord, let us roar. Let us roar. Let us take that stand in you. Let, let, let our spirit come alive and, and not be led just by our soul, by our spirit. Let's sing that. Can we have, have that song now? Let's. You want to sing this and really sing it with all of your heart. Surrender. 